So this isn't exactly how we're used to doing our Palm Wednesday service, but it's a special service. And so we're gonna try to make it as much like our regular service as we can. So one of the things that I hope you all might be able to do before this service starts, and uh, if you haven't done it yet, you can press pause and go and do that, but find a branch. Uh, one of the things about palm branches is that it would have been local to the folks in Jerusalem. So, uh, so one of the things our prayer book says is that we can find a branch local to us. So maybe uh, go with your, your parent or whoever's taking care of you and find a branch to, so that you can wave it when we get to that part of the service and you can lift it up when we do the blessing of it. Uh, and it'll make it feel more like we're all gathered together for this Palm Wednesday service. So with that, we're ready to begin. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Jesus said to his disciples, I need to go to Jerusalem. I've got some important things to do and want to celebrate Passover with you there. Will you come with me? Sure, said the disciples. Passover is a great holiday. Such good food and what a wonderful story Passover celebrates. The exodus of God's people, the Israelites from Egypt. It's good to be with friends and family at Passover. So Jesus and his friends started to go to Jerusalem. When they got close to the city, Jesus said, I'd like two of you to go borrow a donkey in the next village. Please tell the owner I need it. He'll understand. When the two friends came back with a donkey, Jesus climbed on its back and rode down the hill into the city of Jerusalem. The disciples followed behind him. Suddenly, they found themselves in a parade. People were singing and shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, here comes God's King. Hosanna, praise God. People all over heard the shouting and singing and they joined the parade too. Hundreds of people, thousands of people. They started taking off their coats and laying them on the ground for Jesus and the donkey to walk on. They pulled palm branches down from the trees and waved them as they sang. Then they threw their palms on the ground to make a path for Jesus. The crowds gave Jesus a royal welcome as he rode into the city, just like a king. But Jesus was a very different king. He was a king of peace. Not everyone understood that. Jesus was not at all what they were expecting. They thought the crowd was too loud and the parade was getting too big. Who is that man, someone asked. What's going on here, asked another. The crowd answered, This is Jesus, God's King. He has come to save us. Some of the religious leaders murmured, Hush, Jesus, tell your friends to be quiet. It's way too loud here. But Jesus said, We can try to make these people be quiet, but that wouldn't make a difference because today the whole earth is celebrating. And when we say this prayer, what I would love for you to do is to take that branch that you found, and maybe it's a branch and maybe it's a palm from a previous year, but take that and wave it in the air as we pray this together. The Lord be with you. And also, also with, you. with you. Let us pray. On this day, he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as King of Kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along his way. Let these branches be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who lift them in his name may ever hail him as Jesus our King. Amen. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Now what I would love for you all to do now is maybe press pause again and maybe take your branches and if you have brothers or sisters or other family members with you, maybe you all uh, march around the house or around the yard and then come back for the rest of the service. So make sure to come back for the rest of the service as we will continue inside the church like we would do on our regular at, uh, Palm Wednesday service.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray, most loving God, whose most dear Son entered Jerusalem in glory, but knew that the journey would lead to suffering and even death. Help us to walk with Christ, even if the road gets difficult. And may we find it none other than the way of life and peace. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now please be seated for the reading of the Passion. One of, the, one of Jesus' disciples, Judas Iscariot, went to the chief of priests and said, What will you give me if I bring Jesus to you? They paid him 30 pieces of silver, and from that moment he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. Not long after, it was Passover, a very important Jewish festival. Jesus asked his followers to join him for a special Passover meal. When it was evening, Jesus took, Jesus took his place at the table with his friends, and while they were eating, he said, One of you will betray me. And they became upset and began to say, to him one after another. Surely not I, Lord. Surely not I, Lord. He answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. Judas, who had already planned to betray him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. Jesus whispered to Judas, You know the answer, yes. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread and, af and after blessing, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, for this is my body. Then he took a cup and after giving of thanks, he gave it to them saying, Drink from it, all of, all of you, for this is my blood, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I will not drink with you again until we meet in heaven. After dinner, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to Peter, This very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, I would never deny you, Lord. I'd rather die. Then Jesus went to, went with them to a garden called Gethsemane. And then he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and James and John and began to be very troubled. Then he said to them, I am very sad and troubled. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little further, he threw himself on the ground and prayed. My father, if it is possible, please make there be another way, but not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, so could you stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray. Again, he went away for the second time and prayed. My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink this cup, then let your will be done. Jesus was talking about being arrested and killed. Again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is time. Judas has come to betray me, and they have come to arrest me. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived with him a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi. And kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come with swords and clubs to arrest me, as though I were a bandit? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. Then all the disciples fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest's house, where the scribes and elders had gathered. They were making this, their case against Jesus and looking for people who would stand against Jesus. At last, two came forward. This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said, 
Have you no answer? What is it that they say against you? But Jesus was silent. The high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us, if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so, but I tell you. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has spoken against God. Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? They answered, He deserves death. Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You also were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it for all of them, saying, I do not know what you're talking about. When he went to the porch, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of them. Then he shouted loudly. I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed, and then Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people plotted together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate the governor. Now Jesus st stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for their crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you, Barabbas or Jesus? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him. Have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered and a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chiefs, priests, and the elders pursued to the crowds to ask Barbados to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Crucify, Crucify him. him. Then he asked, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify, Crucify him. him. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. So he released Barbados for them and handed Jesus over to be crucified. Then soldiers of the governor took Jesus. They stripped him and put him in a scarlet robe on him. And then, twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed right, right his hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King, King of Jews. Jews! And they spat on him and took a reed and struck him in the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his clothes on them. Then he led away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from the Syrian named Simon. They told, they told the man to carry Jesus' cross. Then when they came a place called Gorthia, which means place of skull, they offered Jesus wine to drink mixed with vinegar, but when he tasted it, he would not drink it. 
And then when he had to crucify him, he divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. They sat down and kept watch over him. Over his head they put charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one of it on his left. Those who passed by mocked him, shaking their heads and saying, You who, could, who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are also the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also along the scribes and elders were mocking him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. And the bandits who were crucified also taunted him in the same way. From noon darkness came over to the land of three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, Lemma Sabatani. That is, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This man is calling for Elijah. At once, at one of the ran, the got a sponge filled it with sour wine and put it on a stick. They gave it to him to for drink. But the other said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, a curtain in the temple was torn into two, top from bottom. The earth shook and, and the rocks were split. The tomb was also opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his re rejection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him, who, with who they were keeping watch over Jesus, they saw an earthquake, and what took place, they were terrified and said, Surely, this man was God's son. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. First of all, thank you to all of the fifth graders for recording the pieces of the Passion and uh, for Bob uh, for putting them all together, for Mr. Irving for doing that for us. Uh, it really, really was wonderful to see everybody and uh, to connect in a different way. And this is the first service for the start of Holy Week. And what I want you all to think about is how different everyone's expectations were from what actually happened. Think about all of those people so excited as they waved their palms and they put down their cloaks and they were so excited. The King of Kings was coming. He was entering into Jerusalem. It was triumphant. It was victorious. Uh, like an army coming back from war. It was absolutely exciting. And they expected Jesus to come into Jerusalem and tell them exactly what God thought and to deliver God's people from, uh, from being held by the Romans to make everything the way they always wanted. That was their expectations. That's what the excitement was when Jesus entered Jerusalem. But it didn't happen exactly the way that people wanted. Just like this last part of our school year hasn't happened the way that we wanted. We expected this to be a time for doing those things that we've done this time of year and previous years. Getting ready for all of those, those traditions here at St. James. Certain field trips or certain activities you're looking forward to. All of our expectations kind of been turned upside down a little bit. But what I hear when I hear this story is that God isn't done. That God isn't done with us. And all those expectations of all those people that wave their palms and they put down their cloaks, all of those expectations probably felt stomped out. 
when Jesus was arrested and tried. And they were probably especially stomped out when Jesus died on the cross. But that wasn't the end, was it? That wasn't the end. God took even those expectations, those expectations that the story wouldn't have a happy ending, those expectations that all those previous expectations had been stomped out, and God made something new and something exciting and something that changed the world for all times happen. Easter morning. And so as we go through this service, as we went through the excitement at the beginning of the service, and as we saw some of those expectations stomped on, as we went through the story of Jesus being handed over, as Jesus being tried, of Jesus carrying his cross and being beaten, and yes, even dying, Think about how God took those expectations and continued to turn them until something nobody could have expected that never happened in the history of time before took place. Jesus rose again. And so, as you think about all those things that maybe you're disappointed in, all those expectations you feel just didn't happen this year, think about this that God is still at work and that this will end and that God will take this and out of it make something new that will continue to surprise us, that will be beyond our expectations. Amen. And now I ask you all to stand wherever you are. Please stand as we say what we believe about that God that always surprises us, uh, that never leaves the story done where we think it might be over. That God that's always been working on our behalf. Let's stand and say what we think about that God, what we know and trust about that God. I believe in a God who made us out of love. I believe in God the Father. I believe in a God who came to show us God's love. I believe in God the Son. And I believe in a God who helps us to love one another. I believe in God the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Most loving God, I ask you to be with us in our disappointments and our unmet expectations. Let us know that you are still working, that you are still surprising us. Open us to all of the love and the grace and the good news out there in the world. People helping one another people spending more time together, people sharing, people caring and praying for one another, people picking up the phone to call people they might not otherwise have called. And be with all those who are working so hard to make people well, the doctors and the nurses and the EMTs and all of the care workers the government officials and all those who are trying to make wise decisions, school leaders, church leaders, community leaders. Be with all the folks that volunteer at free clinics and food pantries and all of those other organizations that help us care for one another. Help us to be those new expectations that people might see. Help us to be the new thing that God is doing when people feel their expectations have been stomped out. Help us to be God's joy and lightness and new thing in the world. We also pray for the things that are on our hearts, for our families, 
for our friends we don't get to see, for this school, for any prayers that we have on our hearts. Lift them up right now. Because we pray all these prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Now let us pray together in those words our Savior Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And may God be with you this holy week. May God stir in you the knowledge and awareness that God is at work in the world, that God is doing new things and wonderful things. May the story and the events that we tell this week assure you that our God is a miraculous God, that our God loves us so completely, that our God is filled with light and hope, and a power that overcomes all things in this world. And may God's blessing be with you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.